Good morning, everyone. This is Sarah with the Pickway County Library, and I'm here to bring you our baby toddler story time. We're going to start out with a song called If You're a Pet and You Know It. Are you ready? If you're a dog and you know it, give a bark. Woof, woof. If you're a dog and you know it, give a bark. Woof, woof. If you're a dog and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a dog and you know it, give a bark. Woof, woof. If you're a cat and you know it, give a meow, meow. If you're a cat and you know it, give a meow, meow. If you're a cat and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a cat and you know it, give a meow, meow. If you're a fishy and you know it, swim around, swim. If you're a fishy and you know it, swim around, swim. If you're a fishy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a fishy and you know it, swim around, swim. If you're a birdie and you know it, fly around, flap. If you're a birdie and you know it, fly around, flap your wings. If you're a birdie and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a birdie and you know it, fly around, flap. Good job. Which animal is your favorite? I think cats are my favorite. The next thing we're going to do is read our story together. This story is all about animals and pets and what our favorites are. Our book today is What's Your Favorite Animal? written by Eric, Carl, and Friends. And we're reading today's book with permission from Macmillan Publishers. What's Your Favorite Animal? by Eric Carl. I have always liked all animals, but cats are my favorite. I have a photograph of myself when I was three years old, holding a couple of kittens, and I am sneezing. I must have been allergic to them, but my mother claimed I had a cold. Later, when I was grown up, Fifey lived with me in my Greenwich Village, New York City walk-up. Fifey was a long-haired black beauty. One day, when I was peeling string beans in the kitchen, she showed great interest in my task. After a while, she even began began to meow ever so slightly. It sounded like begging to me. Finally, I threw a string bean down the long hallway. Fifey chased after it, fetched it, and returned it to me. Again, I threw the string bean down the hallway. Finally, after many chases, Fifey picked up the string bean, ignored me, and walked into the closet. She placed it into a shoe of mine. Then she curled herself around the shoe and went to sleep, guarding the string bean. Isn't that a silly cat story? Giraffes. Though meeting a giraffe is rare, you must be prepared not to stare. They're easily amused, so don't be confused. Just say, hey, how's the weather up there? My favorite animal is an Amazonian neotropical lower river tink tink. It is also this snake's favorite animal. What do you think a tink tink looks like? Blue carp. I am from the Czech Republic, where people eat carp every Christmas Eve. It is a tradition. Just before the Christmas holidays, giant barrels with live carp are set up in the street so people can buy one and bring it home fresh. There, they let the carp swim in the bathtub until Christmas Eve. The carp would look all blue and lonely in the bathtub, and we, the children, would be fascinated and give her a name and try to put our little fingers in her toothless, breathing mouth. What usually happened on Christmas Eve when the carp is supposed to become dinner was that the children would cry, go on strike, and finally the carp would be taken by the whole family to the river and released. You would see many families coming with their carps to the river and blue fish swimming toward the ocean. This gave us all hope. So my favorite creature of hope is the blue carp. I like the snail. You may find her, or him, a little ugly, too squishy. But all her life she works at her craft adding to it day by day, until, when she dies, she leaves us something of great beauty. Behold the octopus. Octopuses are amazing. The more I learn about them, the more I admire them. For instance, they are masters of camouflage. They have these things called chromophores in their skin that can not only change their color when they want to hide, but can change their texture, too. When they need to escape, they can squirt ink into the water to create a distraction and get away. Octopuses have three hearts. Three! Two hearts to pump blood to. Excuse me, kitty. I'm working here. Their lungs, and the third to pump blood everywhere else. 
and boy are they smart. Kitty, please, you're in the way. Octopuses are hard to keep as pets because they're so good at escaping any tank. The female octopus can lay as many as 150,000. Hey! Okay, Kitty, what's the problem? I see. You're jealous. Is it because I chose an octopus instead of a cat as my favorite animal? No? Hmm. Oh, now I get it. You're angry because I was asked and not you. Okay then, Kitty. What's your favorite animal? Meatloaf. Meatloaf is not an animal. Try again. Eric Carl, your favorite animal is Eric Carl. Eric Carl is not an animal. Well, arguably, I guess he is. But, Kitty, this shameless flattery is just not... Wait! Did did Eric Carl just send you a present? What is it? A meatloaf? Eric Carl just sent you a meatloaf? Hmm. This gives me an idea. Dear Eric Carl, you are my most favoritest author. Sincerely, Nick Brule. P.S. Please send me an octopus. That's one silly kitty. Bunnies. We have a bunny. I can't believe this bunny. It eats out of his favorite ceramic bowl, drinks from a water dispenser, and poops and pees in a litter box. I thought we might get a guinea pig, but this guy is no guinea pig. When he is happy, he jumps straight up into the air and kicks his feet. His name is Mr. Hopper, and he is a real member of our family. He even chases after the dog and cat when he wants to play. A dog on my bed. A dog on my bed, right next to my head. A little bit fuzzy, a little bit fat. Nothing is more important than that. Position one. Position two. Position three, position four, position five. Looks like that doggy took the pillows. Elephant. I was trying to decide what my favorite animal was when an elephant reminded me that pachyderms were my favorite. I asked, what's a pachyderm? The elephant said, it's an elephant. I said, why didn't you just say elephant? Elephants are my favorite animal, but sometimes they are show-offs. duck. Most times when you see a duck in a story, it's not very smart. Usually it is in the middle of falling for a trick somebody is playing on it. But I like ducks. I like watching them walk around. Horses. My sister and I shared a room when we were little, and we have shared a lifelong love of horses. In the summer, our parents would put us to bed while it was still light out. After having a child of my own, I understand why now. We would talk each other to sleep. One of our favorite topics was what color horse would we choose if we could have any horse in our fantasy pasture. Judy loved palominos, golden colored with white mane and tail. I could never decide between the deepest black or the purest white. I usually went with pure white. Cows. As a boy, dreaming of becoming an artist, I drew and painted animals constantly, and I wallpapered my room with the pictures. My older sister had claimed horses as her favorite animal, so I chose cows. I suspected that the cows in my drawings came to life during the night because there was a place at the top of my head where the hair stood up and my grandmother said it was a cow lick. After a few years had passed and I could ride my bike far beyond our neighborhood, I looked for jobs taking care of animals. No one had cows. But I was very happy when the owners of some beautiful English setters asked me to work in their kennel. Penguins. I have been known to say that I like animals more than people. It's not really true. I love people, but sometimes being around them makes me feel shy and nervous. I never feel uncomfortable around animals, though. It's animals. An animal I really like to be around and watch is the penguin. If I visit a zoo, I can't wait to spend some time at the penguinarium. There are so many different types of personalities to see. I like how penguins seem confidently awkward on land but then glide so swiftly and expertly underwater. I think I relate to that a little. Leopard. I love leopard because yellow is my favorite color and their spots are so beautiful. The end. I 
hope you enjoyed our story. Thank you for reading along with me. This book and lots of others are available in the Youth Services Department and are ready and available for pickup or to be placed on hold. So get online or come on in to see us and choose some books to read at home. For the next part of our story, we'll be using a sensory bin. In the sensory bin today, we're going to use rice and some toy animals, large and small. Let's take a look in our bin. In the sensory bin today, we have some rice and various sized toy animals. These animals do not have to be ones that were mentioned in the story. I have everything in here from a crocodile and an ant eater to a dinosaur. Your little one can use scoops or their hands to dig for the animals or to bury the animals in the rice. Practice naming them together and enjoy the texture of the rice and the texture on the toys. You can even practice counting them together. The next thing we're going to do is our activity. For this activity, we're going to be using the animals from our sensory bin and sorting them by how big or small they are. Let's take a look at how we're going to do this. For our activity, you can either use a large piece of paper like I've done here with a big circle and a small circle drawn on and labeled, or you can use two paper plates with the words written in the middle. Use the animals from your sensory bin and sort them by their size. If your toys are big, they'll go in the big circle, like these dinosaurs. If the toys are little, they'll go in the, in the small circle, just like this koala. As an addition to this, this activity, you can look up pictures of how big or small the animals are in nature and ask your little one if they're big or small in real life. The last part of our story today is going to be our craft. For our craft today, we have some coloring pages available for you to download and print. These are available in the comment section of this Facebook post and are of all the animals mentioned in today's book. So we have a cat, a snake, a rabbit, and even an elephant. If you color any of them, take a picture and share it with us. We'd love to see which ones you choose. I hope you enjoyed today's story time and that you'll join us again next week as we continue to read and learn together.